all my cut the, goodness. Cut the crust off I, of the I, bread. I, 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 I like, I don't. There's a lot of people out there that call themselves Asian foodies, but in 2023, you can't honestly call yourself that until you've had a bunch of these dishes that we're about to list. Yeah, I mean, there are levels to this in 2023, Andrew. Low, middle, high, intermediate, entry level, expert. And uh, we've probably eaten at thousands of Asian restaurants by now, so let's just break it down cuisine by cuisine. By the way, these are all dishes that you can find in America. So we're not going to be talking about, you know, some grandma's dish in some faraway province, in some faraway village, even though those are delicious. we got to talk about things that you can do to improve your Asian foodie score today in America. And these are all dishes that we've actually had at American restaurants. So, yeah. guys, we got to go through all the different types of Asian cuisine. There's a lot of them, so bear with us. But let's start with the number one that is probably one of the most prevalent in America, which is Cantonese cuisine, a.k.a. Southern Chinese. Right, this is the one that we grew up with. Most people, Andrew, when they engage with Cantonese cuisine, they're probably getting shiu yolk, right, the roasted meats. They're getting dim sum or Americanized Chinese or even like Chinatown, which is really, if you know, its own genre. However, Andrew, do you think people are missing out on all the steamed Dai Pai Dong seafood dishes? Yeah. So I'm talking about what? Steamed scallops, steamed clams, so like hams with clam and soup, uh, a lot of different steamed fishes. Yeah, I would say on the more intense I guess, or expert level, there's a lot of abalone. Uh, there's a lot of seafood. There's, oh, and possibly on the cheaper side, I know that's a deep cut one for a lot of Cantonese people. It's like the yuk bang, which is like the steamed meat patty over rice, which is maybe not the most popular dish for like non-Asians to yeah, eat. Yeah, it's an intense flavor because I think there's a lot of like ham yu and like anchovies in the yuk bang, which is like this meat patty. Uh, not even personally my favorite dish, but I know for, you know, the older crowd, they love themselves a good yolk bang. So what's trending amongst Cantonese food? Because I think a lot of people are like, ah, I've had Cantonese food for years, blah, blah, blah. It's been around for a while. Right, but, like but, how is Cantonese food coming into the 2023, right? It's hot right now. I would say bolo bao crust. You know the pineapple oh. buns that you can get at a classic Cantonese bakery? I would say that a lot of people are doing stuff with bolo crust, like the pineapple bun burgers or like dessert mm -hmm. burgers or ice cream sandwiches or something like that. So that is what is happening with Cantonese cuisine. Um, Andrew, moving on to Korean. I would say a lot of people, they love Korean barbecue. Yeah. They go course. to the tofu houses, which are sundabu houses, right? They usually get kalbi or spicy chicken combos. Yeah. And probably if they're following K-pop or more like the BTS stuff, more of the modern foods, maybe chicken and beer or uh, jjigae, which is like an army stew with possibly a slice of cheese on top. Yeah, obviously like the bar food, like tteokbokki and like even maybe the Korean hot dog are trending right now. However, you got to keep it moving. Gamjatong, this is the next wow. level, right? Yo, the hundred year old dishes, they are yeah. people are missing out on those. I think the tongs of Korean food, aka the soups and the stews, highly underrated, under eaten. I think Koreans know that they're good, but they're not served enough. And I think people, when it comes to stews, Korea, they got to know Koreans got some really good ones. No, especially things involving like a lot of perilla leaves and perilla mm. seeds. That's like a hyper unique flavor. That I love that. Uh, there's this spot, Andrew Yuk Dae Jang, that's really good. Mm -hmm. With the, you know, I'll pop up the menu here. Uh, David, what do you think on the intense pick, like a type of Korean food that is popular, but that, you know, it's kind of got high barriers to entry for people. I, I would, would say, say what gopjang gopjang is like, I, I like Korean food. I like grilled Korean meats <laughs> a lot, but no gopjang is not on my list. I would say another thing that is maybe not considered intense, but a lot of people are more you know, getting into at the expert level would be like Busan or Jeju Island cuisine, which mm. is uh, made up of different ingredients, more seafood heavy. Yeah, I would say what's trending is kalguksu, uh, yuba tofu pockets. That's very trendy. And then also now you're starting to see some of that Korean bar food, like the gochu tuijim. I believe that's how you say it. It's like a Busan, a fried pepper. Oh, with the, with the meat inside, right? Um, I would also say two things that I haven't really seen become popular that I'd like to see, Andrew. Dakjim. Uh, which is really popular, I heard, in Seoul and hot dogs. I would like to see some more <laughs> oh, honey man. almond fried hot dogs. Moving on to Taiwanese cuisine, Andrew. Wow, wow, Most wow. Most people, realistic, what? Boba, popcorn chicken, beef noodle soup, all really solid picks. Maybe a little bit of Lu Ro Fan, 50-50, yeah. right? But what do you think they should try? I think three-cup chicken, all right? Woo! That's served at a lot of Taiwanese spots. I also think... The Taiwanese sausage wrapped in bigger sausage, right. David. Xiao shang chang, oh, da shang chang, bao xiao shang chang. Yeah. Kind of hard to say for me. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to say. But anyways, uh, definitely that. Oh, uh, Taiwanese breakfast. Mm, what do you, you think? You mean like the xiao bing? Yeah, it's a like little that. bit of Jamaican vibes in the sense of like the beef patty 
in the bun, yo tiao in the xiaobing. Yeah, brada. A lot of carbs, a lot of carbs. Uh, I would say the intense pick is probably oyster noodles, mm -hmm. oami swa. And, and you know what's I think trending right now is Taiwanese. There's a style of food called ru chao, which is kind of like a Taiwanese Dai Pai Dong, where it's a lot of hot stir fries, right. a lot of wok hei, and- Right, uh, like, like Dai Pai Dong's in Hong Kong, but instead of being Chiu Zhao influenced, they're more like Hakka, right? Yeah, maybe Hakka and, and other influences. Oh, dude, but Fly's Head, a lot of black bean stir fries. I see good. that mostly trending at uh, Taiwanese restaurants in it's, America in 2023. It's really good, man. Moving on to mainland China, Andrew. Most people probably, what, get dumplings from the north. They get Xiao Long Bao's soup dumplings from the Watertown, yeah. sort of middle China, Shanghai region. They get cumin lamb from from Xi'an, they might get spicy in the Southwest, which is more Sichuan, yeah. Chongqing, and then just noodles all over. What are they missing out on though? Um, there are some other dishes that I think maybe more and more people are gonna be serving, but there's like uh, Ruragan Mian, which it comes from actually Wuhan, which is delicious. <laughs> right, which uh, is a The delicious thing that comes from Wuhan. But David, there's a, you have a favorite dish called Huang Manji that yeah, you have I've, been preaching about. Yeah, Huang Manji and other like Tuan. Like, tuans are almost like a mixture between a soup and a stew and a casserole. It's, like, hard to describe because it doesn't really have, like, a, a full English translation. It's just a tuan. But, yeah, I love, like, heated stone pot things like huang manji, which is a braised chicken dish. Andrew, I would say the intense picks from mainland China, for me, mostly involve intestines. Mm. Like, Sichuan mala intestines at a 10 out of 10 level. For me, I, that's an intense expert pick. I'm just not going to go for it. You know what's trending is obviously soup dumplings Sha Bao have been trending for several years. I feel like every spot in New York serves soup Dude, dumplings. You mean regardless like, whether they're Watertown, Shanghainese, Wuxi, Hangzhou bro, or not? There are so many soup dumplings in New York. New York loves the soup well, dumplings. Do you, do you think it's like the quality's gone down because a lot of people are like, oh yeah, the soup dumplings are trending even though that's not from my province. I'm just going to make it because Honestly, that's what people want. There's so many decent soup dumplings in the city. It's hard for me to even pinpoint what's the best ones aside from- I would say- would you say a lot are between seven and eight yeah, and very definitely. few are nine and 10? Definitely. Oh, one thing that I'd like to see get trending, which I don't know if it is, Andrew, is Guizhou Mi Fun. Oh, okay. From Burt Bowl, like the, yeah. the spicy chicken cold and, noodles. And uh, shout out to this one spot, man. They were say, serving Guo Kui's, but Guo Kui's, they closed down. So it clearly, it was like this essentially Chinese flat hot pocket with right. meat inside. It was delicious, but I don't know. I want to see those come back, man. But I guess, I don't know. Maybe and it's just Interesting tough. enough, Andrew, Guo Kui's come in two different styles. A yeah. Sichuan style and a Henan style. You know what? I like those meat patties, like the like the robings. Jingling like robing. The, yeah, or the, just robings. Yeah, there's just the robe, like a big oh, meat just what pocket. If, if from Beijing, the Munding robings came over from the Forbidden City. Anyway, moving on to Japanese, Andrew. A lot of people have Japanese listed as their most favorite cuisine in the whole world, right? However, interestingly enough, Andrew, most people just pretty much dip their toes into what? Ramen, teriyaki, maybe izakayas, yakitoris, uh -huh. and of course, various levels of sushi. Anything from, you know, super authentic sushi to omakases, uh -huh. fusion omakases, all the way to just Americanized sushi. So, so David, what's the next step in Japanese food? Since everybody's exposed to some level of Japanese food. Uh, and by the way, guys, I think that these are spots that are decently numerous in America. We had to list numerous spots that, you know, just that you could find them in America. Soba spots, okay. nabe spots, oh. nabe, Hakata nabe spots mm -hmm. with uh, that are almost like their version of hot pot. Like, like chunko, chunko nabe or, uh, yeah, I think that's the one that the sumos ate. Yeah, yeah. that's really and good. And to me, a lot of people would have expected me to say shabu, right? But for me, actually, <laughs> I'm going to say expensive shabu shabu it's good, but it's a little overrated compared to nabe pots. Wow, you're kind of like, uh, instead of the shabu shabu, you're like nabe nabe. I'm not I think the going on the shabu I think shabu. the intense pick, Andrew, of course, a lot of people would be like, the intense pick dude would be the blowfish sushi. Well, they're, they're, the, the fugu. fugu. The fugu's <laughs> never coming to America, guys. They're never going to allow that to be served in America. Uh, we had it actually in Japan. The taste is pretty tame. I would say it'd be Japanese kaiseki, the mm. small individual dishes meal. We had it uh, at a pretty good spot in Toronto. Yeah, I see a lot of different levels of ramen, different types of ramen. I think chicken ramen, tori ramen is going to get more and more popular, as it already is, and there's some great tori ramen tori out Tori python. Here. Yeah. And then uh, also ceremonial matcha. Like, that's what's trending. Legit ceremonial matcha spots. No, because matcha's been trending, Andrew. Even Starbucks has a matcha, but it's not like... Uji ceremonial matcha. We are talking about ceremonial matcha. Yeah, I think a lot of Japanese concepts are actually like, th th that's one of the more developed foods in America in the big cities. Um, Vietnamese, Andrew. Ooh! Uh, most people get what? Pho? Yeah. 
Bun mees, yeah, vermicelli plates. Yeah, you know but the basics. Would, would you say that those are the three that most people engage in? Yeah, yeah. There's also uh, at some spots you can get a Vietnamese hot pot. I don't know what it's called in Vietnamese, but those always look really good. Lao, but I there's think. also this thing called mi quang that has like this yellow turmeric noodle that not a lot of spots serve, but you should get it when you have the chance. No, no, you see Mi Kwang spots yeah. more and more often, right? What I do like in New York is that a number of the Vietnamese spots out here, they have the clay pot with the with the salmon in it. Right, but it's supposed to be traditionally with catfish. Yes, I know, but you know, salmon's tasty. Um, I really actually like Bun Kun. Mm. Bun Kun is sort of the Vietnamese version of Cheng Phun, like a yeah. wrap rice roll. Super good. In a lot of ways, man. It, it's better, dude. It, 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 it's, it's better. It's got its pros and cons. But David, so what's the intense pick of Vietnamese right now? That is kind of trending. Oh man, Bun Mam. Yeah. And this is a um like a wrap platter from Hanoi. Yeah. And there, there's a spot in New York you can get it called Mom. I think that that is pretty like you definitely. Know what? It could be more acquired because of the fish or the shrimp paste dip that you dip. The, the boon mama. I, I love any sort of wrap food that Vietnamese have, but yeah, because the cuts are intestines and blood sausages, for some people, it's, it's not going to be your favorite. Yeah, a lot. I think a lot of our intense picks are going to involve intestines or sausages made of blood. Um, Andrew, I think point. the trending one in the Vietnamese world actually is kam ga roti. Mm. And uh, when we say roti, we're not using it as the, in the Indian word, but it's actually like a fried chicken leg dish that I have started to see be trending, and it's not something that uh, fits within the bun mi pho dichotomy. Yo, man, I, I know there's one spot in Seattle. I hope they start serving it more in New York. Yeah, uh, delicious. Moving on, David, what's next? Filipino. Woo! Filipino. Filipino. Okay, so of course you guys know the basics, lumpia, adobo, halo halo, you know, Jollibee's if you count that as Filipino food, which it's a Filipino chain. Yeah, uh, I think people need to get into arroz caldo, which mm. is their version of chicken kanji. And I got to say, arroz yeah. caldo, Andrew, and I heard there's even some tiny influence from the Spanish cuisine in that dish as well. It might be the ve best version of chicken kanji I've ever had. It's up there. That's a big statement. Um, I think other people got some really cool dishes. And a beef caldereta mm -hmm. is like a beef stew that I heard is, uh, you know, I, I've had it before. It's got carrots. It's really? Got really? I, I actually, surprisingly enough, around the world, beef stews are all kind of similar. Or yes. at least every country serves a beef stew that is similar to each other's. Yeah. And it, it looks similar. But, but, yeah. but in different cultures, it maintains like a different place in the food hierarchy. Yeah. Um, definitely better than Campbell's chunky beef stew. I would say the intense pick... The chocolate meat, Andrew, the diniguan. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I, I'm so 50-50 on diniguan. I'm not going to lie. I've had some good versions. I've had some good versions. I, it's a tough to sell. To me, when you cook stuff with any sort of pig's blood, it can go. It's so dicey. Like, you're playing yeah. with fire. It's very uh, volatile. You know what's really trending right now, David? Is anything ube. Mm. All everything ube. Ube, I think, is the purple color of the Asian food world. It has a bright color. It has it's a sweeter taste than taro. Smooth. Um, I know it gets mixed up with taro a lot, but it's actually a deeper. I think purple. that taro and ube are from the same like plant family. Yeah, they're though. both roots, but uh, ube tends to be a little sweeter. Shout so. out to ube everything, man. Uh, moving on to Thailand, Andrew. This is probably one of the trendiest foods in America right now, right? It grabs a lot of Thai different Thai. demographics. Um, appeals to a lot of different people. Andrew, probably everybody, what, realistically eats Pad Thai. I think people have moved on to Pad Si U and Pad Ki Mao lately, right? And uh, pineapple fried rice. I've been seeing people order pineapple fried rice you, nonstop. You know what it is, man? It's because even the dudes who kind of like more ate like hood Chinese food, they're starting to eat more pineapple fried rice from Thailand too. But Thai fried rice is really good, man. It has a lot of flavor. I totally recommend it. Um, some dishes that you should try that you can find at a lot of spots now are duck boat noodles. Duck boat noodles. Or just duck noodles in general. Duck, duck noodles is a 10 out of 10, man. Um, and then you have khao soy, which is kind of like the curry egg noodle uh, noodle soup type dish with, with the, the chicken drumsticks, drumsticks with the chicken drums in it. Uh, soft shell crab curry at some of the nicer spots. Yeah, this you is, have to go to a more high rent yeah. high spot to be able to secure that. And it's dish. probably going to be in the bigger cities. Um, in on the intense side, which we have seen is like raw crab larb or raw fish larb or just any type of larb, right? Yeah, lop, just, lop from uh, Isan. Obviously, Thailand they have like. Very different cuisines in very different provinces and regions. Um, Andrew, I'd also say any other pork dishes. Like, Thais really grill pork really, really well. Um, I would say their trending things right now is crab fried rice and papaya salads. I see those things trending 
uh, into the future. And it's not just like the base level one. It's sort of like a papaya salad. You could do a salted egg yolk papaya salad. You could do, you know, this papaya salad, that papaya salad, this type of lop, this type of lop. Moving on to India, Andrew. Of course, everybody knows they love butter chicken. They love chicken tiki masala. They love samosas, roti, naan, Mm. paratha, tandoori chicken as well. Tandoori is actually... A popular dish, but it's actually underrated how good tandoori chicken is. But what do people need to try? Uh, at this point, if you've had a lot of Indian food, you probably have needed to try like mushroom mutter, kati rolls, dosas, you know, from the south. Uh, different types of pani puri. Pani puri is kind of trendy right now with the little crispy balls. You poke into it, and then you put the put the little sauce and the beans inside. Uh, uh, that's galab pretty good. Jamin, I know galab jamun. Some people would debate whether that's a popular dish, but I would say most people still have not had dude, that that are not Indian. Dude, if you like donut holes, try galab jamun. Oh, galab jamun sure. is the best donut hole on it's earth. It's good. It's uh, very, with very the ginger sweet, vibe in it too. I would also say um, the lunch tins. Mm-hmm. You know. The lunch tins that they they, they carry oh, they multiple come. levels. Yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah. the name. I'm sorry. Uh, intensity wise, you would want to get in some of the maybe deeper some of the cheese curries, the palak paneers, mm-hmm. um, the dal makhani, which is more of like the bean lentil yeah. stews that almost like yeah. to the outside eye they might look like a curry, but it's not. Yeah, and you know what's trending right now are a lot of like Indian burgers. Like there's a spot called Rowdy Rooster out in New York and Namkeen that are doing like. Indian chicken sandwiches. So those are the fusion spots that they may or may not have in India, Andrew. But in India, the slider style, the vada pav, is really, really trending. Mm-hmm. So people can either put meat in a slider, Andrew, like meat and curry, or even the lentils and potatoes, aloo, yeah. other things in a slider. And, and, and the Hakka Chinese food. Gobi Manchurian is kind of trendy right now. Oh, that's, that's trending. That's already kind of been around in certain Indian neighborhoods. There's always been a couple restaurants, but now it's reaching the city and trying to be cool and hipster and I heard it's trending in India. No. Yeah, over there. Um, Andrew, Indonesia. You know, probably- uh, Indonesia. Mo- I don't know how much people know people. I do think a lot of people eat mee goreng, the instant noodle, right? The brand yeah. uh, from Indomie. Um, they probably get beef rendang. And I notice a lot of people really stick with beef rendang and skewers. Yeah, satay, Bobby, I mean, satay, I am. And I think by now, you know, because there's so much crossover between Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singaporean, obviously. But uh, yeah, like nasi lemak is obviously a dish you got to try. Mm. And actually, I'm not gonna listen. I'm not. I don't eat everything with my hands, but I think something about eating nasi lemak with your hands is kind of nice. Yeah, I actually really I like, like the anchovies. That's my favorite way to eat like it, it in there. Um, Andrew, the sup buntut, which mm-hmm. is actually an oxtail soup. That's uh, clear. I actually really like a lot of food from Borneo. Yeah. Borneo, Kalimantan is like one of my favorite restaurants in America. Um, gado Gado. Yeah. I think Gado Gado is one of the best salads in the world. Wow. Um, and what are the intense picks? I would say there's this dish called good egg, which is like a stewed jackfruit. And it's not necessarily too crazy, but just eating jackfruit that's been prepared like a protein, I think would be like people would be like, whoa, dude, that's crazy. Uh, something that you're going to be seeing uh, that's trending more and more from Indonesian food is uh, martabak, which is like this big, thick, super sweet cake. I had it fresh on the streets of Jakarta before. It was very, very delicious. They come in chocolate versions, and all different types You know what's of the interesting thing about martabak, Andrew? Western appeal. Yes, because it's like Universal cake. appeal. I mean, I think it might come from some Western influence, right? Because there was some Dutch influence yeah, in right, it. Right. However, I'm not sure, but it is delicious. Right, it does taste like there could be Nutella in the middle. Uh, po- possibly. Um, possibly. I, uh, I got to look it up. Um, Andrew, copy teams. Yes. I think the copy team culture from Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, just copy, right? What's yeah. what they're calling coffee. Because I think Indonesia is number one or o- number B. two actually coffee producer in the world. They, they make a lot of coffee. But they, they, it doesn't really got that. They don't get the credits. You know, people know about the the Java beans, but they don't know about the Java man. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And then uh, what's also trending is there's this uh, Indonesian halal boba shop that's going to be opening up in New York soon. Oh, their first location. Taguk. Taguk. Um, Moving on to Singapore and Malaysia. Probably everybody's knowing what's trending right now is the chicken rice. Yeah. And especially, obviously, they the whole idea of hawker stall food has gotten so popular in the past 10 years, even starting with... Kind of Anthony Bourdain always talking about it, trying to bring he, it to He America. was like the biggest Western world yeah. proponent, right? Yeah. Um, and what do you think? People got to try what? Chili crab and roti talor. Roti yeah. talor is a roti stuffed with eggs and onions and potentially meat. Delicious. Very delicious. you can delicious. make it uh, a dip as well. I would say the more intense things, in my opinion, that you can find in America, by the way. I know there's like so many things in uh-huh. each village and each province. Deep cut stuffs on old back roads. We're not talking about those. We're talking about stuff that made it to America. Skate wings. Yeah. Skate wings and stingray. It's rarer to find stingray, but skate wings is like, people are like, ooh, what, what is that? And if yeah. they knew what it looked like, 
before it was cooked. They, I don't know if Americans I, would go for it. I would say taste-wise, it's not bad, though. It kind of tastes like just a regular fish. I mean, it is a fish, but uh, it's definitely a different fish. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people would, would stay away from it if they knew what it was. I um, think trending-wise, salted egg yolk everything. Whether we're talking about salted egg yolk shrimps, salted egg yolk desserts, obviously the Irvin salted egg yolk chips, uh, that's really what's coming out. I believe in Singapore and, and Malaysia where I'm just like, whoa, this is taking over the world. One more thing you got to try of Singaporean food that is not always served at every dinner style Singaporean restaurant is kaya toast. Ooh. That's more at, you know, copy TMs and stuff like that. But you can find that it's really good. And it's really simple. Just butter, kaya jam, and then you dip into egg with a little bit of soy sauce and white pepper. Oh, my cut the, goodness. Cut the crust off I, of the I'm, bread. I'm, 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 I like, I don't know if like copy TM, uh, Kaya Toast is going to take over, but I hope it does. Yeah, I Moving know. on, Andrew, Myanmar. Of course, um, probably most people have not even had, you know, Burmese food from it's, Myanmar. It's not a lot of restaurants. But if they have, they probably had what? Realistically, the tea leaf salad, which is incredible. You guys got to try it. It's an absolute banger. And probably Mohinga, which is a catfish coconut curry noodle. Yeah. And uh, I know at a lot of Asian night markets, like at the Queens night market, they'll have like Burmese bites. It's a popular stand. They'll have this thing uh, called kima palata, which is kind of like a roti talor, which is like a stuffed pancake, right? And it takes more after the scallion pancake slash roti style where you stuff it with meat. Yeah, yeah. because if you look at Myanmar's position, Andrew, it's like equally part of the Indiosphere. It obviously has its own local Southeast Asian culture. I have a lot of Sinosphere influence as well. Shan noodle. Mm. Their Shan noodle is really good. And Burmese chicken curry is probably, in my opinion, Andrew, the most underrated chicken curry in the world. Yeah. Like in terms of like nobody ever puts it on a top chicken curry list, but I am telling you, Burmese chicken uh -huh. curry. There's a spot in Philly called Banana Leaf that is 10, 12 out of 10. Um, Andrew, I would say the more intense dishes, and they're not really intense. I don't think Burmese food is like weird or anything. Uh, coconut rice, coconut noodles. People are not used to eating the coconut flavor in noodle soups. Yeah, I think Burmese Myanmar food is one of those types of foods that just needs more exposure in America. So it's hard to say, oh, this is a deep cut thing that is super trendy because you just need to Nothing's try the trending, food. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's not really trending. You just It's just trying to make its way into America now. I do believe, though, that more people are going to take a look at that tea leaf salad and just be like, wow. Yo, the tea leaf salad is cool. That, that's the literally the only tea leaf salad that I know of from any culture. Delicious. Interesting. Interesting. It is with the peanuts too. Um, moving on, Andrew, Bangladesh. Mm. I would say that most people, and I don't think a lot of people know a lot about Bangladesh, uh, Bangladeshi food. However, I believe somebody told me that like 60% of the Indian restaurants in America are actually run by Bengali people. However, in terms of their own native cuisine, uh, mutton curry is probably what is probably the most known. But I would say, obviously, the fish dishes and they have so many different types of fish curries or uh -huh. fish sauces, green ones, yellow ones, orange ones, red ones, fish with the fish egg in the middle of the fish filet. Um, I would say that, and then like fushka, mm. right? Um, Andrew, the intense choice, probably from uh, Bengali food. From what be, you've had, because you've, you've had yeah, Bengali I've been, I've been to Jackson Heights, I've been to Jackson Heights. I would say would be the mashed up fish in the banana leaf. Oh. Like, j just more intense. Right, that filling. doesn't sound like... Uh, the what most, most people right would, now. would immediately go for. Fish in a banana. Yeah, I would say, but what is trending, Andrew, is their jal murray served in a paper cup. Uh huh. They they actually take like a newspaper or like new and then like wrap it into a cone and they put the jal murray, which is uh almost like a, a crispy rice snack, mm. into it. And you just eat it as you go yeah, along. Yeah, dessert wise, they have kofi, which is kind of like a creamy, uh, kind of ice oh, creamy dish. Andrew, too. they actually have a kofi boba spot in New York that is opened up by Bengali Americans. Yeah, boba uh, de pila. Something yeah, like moving on to Cambodian. Andrew, most people, if they've ever had Cambodian food, mm -hmm. have probably had kutil. Yes. Which is, uh, you know, their shared dish, obviously, hutil in Vietnam as well. And a uh, very, very delicious version, though. The Cambodian version is mm -hmm. incredible. Um, I would say try the CBS, the Cambodian beef sticks, mm -hmm. uh, which is called chakoang uh, amok. Is good too. I've only had it one time, but I I got to try more versions of amok. I would say the intense version, Andrew, uh, the intense pick of Cambodian food would probably be prahok. Yeah, right. I mean, it's uh, it's intense. It is indeed intense. Uh, also, yeah, but you can the, eat it with steaks too. I see uh, Chaloy always eating a very rare Cambodian steak with prahok. It looks delicious. Um, trending wise, I would say that a lot of like 
Cambodian spices and the way they kind of just use a lot of black pepper, that's kind of trending. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of Asians, they're like, oh, they're always throwing herbs and dishes and this and that, which is dope. But then what about just using some pepper too? Yeah, I think the Chinese diasporic Cambodian food is amazing. And I also think that um, there's just going to be more and more people who are infusing Cambodian flavors into other food. Like there's Chia's Kitchen. Chia's Kitchen is delicious out in 626. Hopefully it's still going. They took North Shore Hawaiian shrimp and they mixed it with Cambodian. I want to say perhaps some Prahok. No, yep, a little well, bit yeah. of that 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 Cambodian heat. Yeah, it's delicious. Uh, moving on to Lao food, David. Laos. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, Gordon Ramsay's favorite food destination in the world right now. Yeah, I would say not that many people know about Laos food because it's a little bit similar uh, thing as Bengali's owning Thai restaurants. I mean, I'm sorry, Bengali's owning Indian restaurants. A lot of people from Laos own Thai restaurants, but they don't necessarily serve a bunch of hyper local Lao dishes at them. However, people would know the Lao sausage. Oh yeah. The sa oil. The number one. That is the number one sausage and the, in the world. And by they're, the way. they invented, I heard Isan, you know, Lao people invented the tamakun, the papaya salad. And they have so many different versions. I think some places even serve like 20 versions of it. Um, but people should check out the fried sticky rice, even on a stick, the cow niao. And then, oh, this one, oh, I forgot this one from Cambodians real quick. The numpongs are really yeah. good. The, the coconut It's shrimp. kind of like their bun mi. Yeah, but uh, sorry, back to Lao. Oh, a lot. Khao pun. Mm. Pork noodle soup. Yeah. Really, really good. And what would you think the intense pick would be from Laos? I would say there's some noodle soups. I always order this one. It's called Gang Na Mai. Mm -hmm. That chicken, the chicken noodle soup with uh, yeah. herbs in it. Yeah, I think, to be honest, Lao food is really delicious, and it has a chance to go more popular. I think it just comes from a lack of knowledge and exposure to people, where they're like, I don't know what Lao food, it's like a marketing thing to me. Like, Lao food is delicious, though, but they, they got all the, they take the top 10, oh my God, it's so good. Yeah, I would say what's trending is the Lao sausages, though. That's the one thing, the that, sak oi, that I've yeah. seen people from other Asian cultures that are nearby be like, yo, Lao's got the best I'm one. I'm rooting for the Lao sausage to come into the game and really take over, guys. I'm rooting for it. You mean the same I way that like, the kielbasa from uh, Poland took over? I think it is setting the new gold standard for sausages. That's what I think, personally. We got to get the saw to be popping. I was going to use the word Poland. Anyway, um, Nepal, Nepalese, and most mm. people, if they know anything about Nepal, obviously it's this place that sort of is like, it's part of the Chinese world. It's part of the Indian world. Yeah. Nobody knows. Buddha's from Nepal. Um, people like Nepalese momos, which is their version of the Tibetan momos, right? That's probably it's, the only thing that some people know from uh, Nepal. I mean, some delicious. People, some people even like them even more than like the Chinese dumplings or like soup dumplings, which it is kind of like a soup well, dumpling. Well, basically they soupy. took the Tibetan momo and then put curry on the bottom, right? Yeah. Um, Andrew, what would you say is the uh, some other things that people don't know about? I would say tukpa. Mm. They don't be... In the, 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 the Sherpa Tukpa. Yeah, yeah. I think for a lot of these cuisines, like Nepal and stuff, like they definitely have some great dishes. It's just like kind of gathering it all together and, and doing it out of one spot. And like, you know, it, it is marketing and decor, of course, in the city. You want to make things cool. So. Chow chow. Yeah. I don't, I don't think the buff meat is coming over, though. All right, so something that's intense, yeah, is the yak cheese candies. <laughs> we had that. I don't even think that that's like... That is pretty deep cut. You can buy those. It's like dry. No, cheese. you can get them in America. You, you, yeah, you you have to get it in Jackson Heights and Queens. But um, uh, I would say yeah. trending is momos though for sure. And get momos. you know what I've noticed though is like some of the young Nepalese Americans or Tibetan Americans, like they're they're mixing the momos with more fusion flavors that they wouldn't necessarily even have back home in mm -hmm. the motherland. Um, and Uzbek food. Wow. Uzbek food is trending in America right now. I would say, I mean, like, more than it was for sure. I got to look at the, you know, statistics. But uh, I would say everybody gets plov, mm -hmm. right, which is their, almost their version of a pulao or, uh -huh. like, a, almost a fried yeah, it's rice. A it's a mixed with rice. raisins in it and uh, almonds. And shashlik, which is their kebab. And you know what's also very trendy is lagman. Lagman, this is Ooh. also eaten. Uh, that, that's your intermediate pick, lagman. Yeah. What would you say, Andrew? What do you like better, the soupy lagman or the fried lagman? I like the fried lagman. Dude, the I fried like the fried lagman. Lag it's so interesting, Andrew. It's almost like it's like a fried pasta because they do use some stir-frying techniques because, like we were saying, Uzbekistan is this like very interesting mix of 
Uh, yeah. the east, and, and by the way, when the we west. say Uzbekistan, there is a lot of crossover with like Ulgur food, you know? Uh, so like the Montes, Samsas, it's, I don't want to say it's the same, but there is a lot of crossover. Um, I would say intense pick. I cannot think of anything from the Uzbek food that's intense in America. I'm sure over there, I looked it up, they got Narnin, which is a, a horse noodle, horse meat noodle. Yeah, so that would be intense. Off. But in terms of... These dishes in America, it's hard to think of like, oh, yo, that one's like hard to- I, I think Logmon, I see a lot of like YouTube videos talking about Logmon because it's kind of a hand-pulled noodle as well. You're saying that's the trending? I think it's trending that and uh, Plov. Yeah, which is everybody tell rice. me what's the intense pick from Uzbekistan or that region. Last but not least, Andrew, we got Mongolia. Wow. Most people's exposure to Mongolian food, Andrew, which uh, is part of East Asia, even though some people categorize it as part of- North Asia, which is more like Siberia and stuff like that, uh, is Mongolian Grill. So let me just tell people that Mongolian Grill is not authentic, but let me tell you this. You want to hear the story of Mongolian Grill, Andrew? So Mongolians, at one point during the Yuan Dynasty, took over Beijing. Mm -hmm. In Beijing, they invented this fusion cuisine that was part Chinese, part Mongolian, where they took the beef and they mixed it with a bunch of different onions and green scallions. A chef from Taiwan knew that story and he knew that recipe from Beijing. When after the war, they went back to Taiwan and then from Taiwan, he came to America and then invented Mongolian grill. So there is still some like domino linkage yeah. and to that's the where, Mongolian empire. That's where the dish Mongolian beef comes from, where it's beef and green onions. Yeah, because that dish in Japan, Andrew, they just do it with lamb and they still call it Genghis Khan grill even in Hokkaido. They, they still getting credit for it. It's, so anyway, it's a good they, I'm saying there's some legitimacy to it. And moving on to the picks that they should try at Mongolian restaurants. And I think they're mostly in LA and Chicago. There's, there's, there's not, there is no Mongolian restaurants in New York. Somebody needs to do it. We gotta uh, call one of our Mongolian friends and yeah. open up some. Hushor. Yeah. It's, delicious. It's like a delicious meat pocket. Andrew, does it kind of taste like Jing Dong Robing? I love meat pockets. Yeah. I love meat pockets. Uh, their version of a baozi, which is called baoz, mm -hmm. really, really good. It's almost like a Monty baoz hybrid. Uh, Tsui uh -huh. which is their version of a, a Chinese stir-fry noodle, really good. Uh, uh, carrot da vibe there. David, what's um, what's the intense pick? I would say for sure, and we had this in America at uh, Adirag, Mongolian restaurant in LA, would, would be a stewed goat head. Um, yeah. And then trending... Probably nothing's really trending right now, but if I was to make a prediction, Andrew, I'm going to go with the Hushor. Andrew, we just went through the list for 2023. Um, we went through the list of the things that most people are trying, but the things they could try that are delicious, and then we gave them the expert pick. Let us know in the comments down below if we missed any dishes that you think people got to try from these cultures, guys. Obviously, you know, you can call yourself a foodie or whatever, but we're, we're just saying that these are dishes that at least you should know about. You right. should be aware of if you are really going to be into Asian food. And I think the whole thing about being into Asian food, it's just like, it's a sense of pride. It's a sense of comfort. It's a sense of connection yeah. with uh, the pan-Asian cultures. Yeah, and I'm not saying just stop at food. It's not like, oh, I just ate a culture's food. I know everything about them. But I think that, like you said, it's a great way to get your foot in the door to just understanding, I guess, like, you know, this part of the world that is up and coming that very few people in the West know much about it, to be honest. Like, wouldn't you say, Andrew, the majority of people are, you know, out of low, middle, high, probably still at the low level? Yeah, but I mean, I there's think, nothing wrong with that. Though. I think they watch a lot of food videos, and I know that not all this food is available to you, depending on where you live. Obviously, heavily more available in Coastal cities like are. New York and LA. Between New York and LA, you're probably going to have like a little bit of everything. Yeah, coastal cities, Seattle, SF, Bay yeah, Area. These are big immigrant uh, areas. But yeah, anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below. That is our list of dishes that you got to have had, or at least know about, in order to call yourself an Asian foodie. Let us know what Look you thought of that. our list in the comment section below. I'm sorry if we left anything out. We don't know everything at a 10 out of 10 level. That's just our thoughts. Let us know if you agree, disagree, what else you would add. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.